Welcome to KGOD, everyone's favorite station, broadcasting today's highest consciousness to you live from eternity, commercial free, with everyone's favorite DJ, God. Yay, God. The thing itself that knows what you love and leads you to it. A special shout out to our sponsors, love, peace, joy, harmony, compassion, prosperity, and bliss. When traveling, please be sure to check out our sister stations, KTRU, KLUV, KIM, and KONE. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the angels and the cosmic merry maids of the universe. <laughs> now don't turn that dial. Your celestial song is coming up next. Warning, listening to this station for prolonged periods may lead to ecstatic joy, profound prosperity, sparkling light, overwhelming clarity, and the peace that passes human understanding. I'm looking at you to flinch. <laughs> this, <laughs> listen at your own bliss. All right, here we are. This is the last Sunday of KGOD, <laughs> but uh, here in the service, that is. But you, if you were here last week, you took on the challenge and accepted waking up every morning and speaking those first paragraphs, and then at night, going, before you go to bed, speaking those last few paragraphs. If you weren't here last week, I've got some extra sheets for you. If you'd like to take on that 30-day challenge, how many of you have taken that challenge and done it this week? Some of you are right, and how's that going? Good. Feeling good? Yeah. High vibrations throughout the day? Yeah. I mean, it's better than coffee. <laughs> so good, right? Wait a second. <laughs> I stand corrected. I stand corrected. <laughs> Friends, it's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be here. I love coming in here when they have uh, like these draped curtains because there was a celebration in here or there's going to be an additional celebration because right now this is a celebration. We are celebrating life. We are here. We've been singing, and there's been prayer so far, and God, it's just so good, isn't it? Yeah. It's so good to be alive and to be present and available to get to praise and be inspired and uplifted on a Sunday morning. I'm very grateful to get to do this with you, so thank you for being here. Yeah, let's give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Now, so every January, as I've been mentioning every week so far, we go through the first four chapters of the Science of Mind textbook, which is actually the introduction before actual chapter one, right? And so those uh, four sections of the introduction are the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. Now, um, I've been saying some of the same things over and over uh, throughout the weeks, and the intention of that is that we get it, right? So uh, we hear things with our conscious mind, but then there's our unconscious, right? And so if we can continue to hear the same things until our unconscious believes it, then it's not just our conscious mind telling our unconscious mind, but our unconscious mind is moving us through the world that way. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, so that's what we're here for. And, uh, and fellowship and love and community and healing and experiencing all the good possible for us in our lives. Yes? Yes. Yeah. And so I can't remember what week it was, but I introduced something new, and I'm going to test it out here today. 
God is good. All the time. 24-7, 365. Now I'll do it again because everyone caught on this time. <laughs> and then if I say it, you say that, right? God is good. All the time. 24-7, 365. Yes, all right. And so just a brief recap of those first four chapters of the Science of Mind textbook or first four sections in the intro, we've got the thing itself, right? The thing itself, that's the presence. That's the thing. When we offer the namaste greeting to each other, we're bowing to that thing. We're honoring the presence that is in me is also in you. And that presence sees that in you. And, and that, that kind of removes all barriers, doesn't it? If there was anything that maybe you were upset about, but coming to that place of absolute presence and knowing that this presence that is in me is also in you is so powerful. That's the thing itself, right? That is the thing of which I speak. So we call it by many names, love, beauty, joy, bliss, power. Uh, We call it Jesus, Buddha, Allah, Atman, whatever you may call it, the universe, the thing itself, the creative power, eternity, the eternal presence, the force, the way. (laughs) I could go on and on. (laughs) There's many names for it, you know. There's so many names, but it's the same thing. And so Ernest Holmes was so convinced that it was this same presence in everything. That's how he was able to study all of the different religions and find out that there's something common in and through all religions that allows the Muslims to have their prayers answered and the Catholics to have their prayers answered and the the Jewish people to have their prayers answered and so on, right? There's a common thread and that common thread is this thing called spirit. It's the thing itself. And so it's called by many different names Different things have, uh, organizations have come up around it to worship and praise in their own particular way, but it's the same thing. That's the thing itself. The thing itself, it's the thing that you recognize when you're talking to someone and you feel a connection. That's the presence. When you feel love, if you're in a relationship and you feel love for your significant other or you feel love for your children or your friends, you're feeling God's love, spirit's love, and spirit's love is the love that lives within you. When you experience beauty, like you go and see some artwork or something, right? And you're just touched and moved and inspired. It's spirit recognizing itself. That's the thing itself. The thing itself. And it's, there's only one. And so that's one of the fundamental tenets. That's actually the first rule of metaphysics, you know? Oneness. There's one thing happening, and it is the divine. All right, that's the thing itself. So whatever name you call it, it's the all-powerful, all-present thing that is in and through all creation, everywhere present, always, in the same amount. So it's not like it's in Jody more than it's in Diane or vice versa, and it's not like it's in Brian more than it's in BJ back there. It's not like it's in Travis more than it is in Anna or a practitioner, it's not in me more than it's in any of you. It's the same presence that's in all of us, we're becoming aware of it. So the more we become aware of it, the more we get to tune into it, the more we experience the truth of our lives. Because the other stuff doesn't matter, right? Like we get so interested in the divine that all of the other stuff, it, it loses its power, it's uninteresting, you know? Because we've tapped into the divine. We've tapped into the source, the one thing that is in and through all creation. And, and as we open our hearts more to it, more is, is revealed to us. As we start to look for spirit in everything, spirit shows up. In people, in conversations, in coffee, you know. <laughs> that was for Travis. <laughs> in KGOD, right? Um, So that's the thing itself. Now, the way it works, this is part two. So the way the thing itself works, and as a reminder, the thing itself is love and law, right? And so not two things, but it's like you have a quarter, you've got heads and tails. It's still a quarter. So with um, spirit, there's 
Love and law, heads and tails, the same spirit, one thing. Now that means love points the way and law makes the way possible. So the laws in the universe, there are many laws and that makes the way possible. So the thing that we're studying here is this creative process, right? And we're saying every Sunday pretty much that our thoughts have power and we have the power to create a life that we would love, right? So the way it works is that it works for us by working through us. I mean, I would love to just wave my magic wand and have it be done even though I'm feeling terrible, right? Or, or I'm um, uh, uh, divided, maybe. There's some division in me and you want to just wave the wand. Well, you can wave the wand, but there's something for us to do. It works for us by working through us. You want to experience more love in your life, be more loving. You want to have more friends in your life, be a friend. You want to have more nurturing, open relationships who, that are uh, mutually nourishing and um, heart opening and expanding, be that, right? We have to be the thing we want to see in the world. And so it works for us by working through us, and it responds to us by responding to our thoughts. I love that song. Um, Wait, what was? I believe in God. I believe that spirit's forever and expanding. I believe our thoughts affect the world around us. That's what's happening. Our thoughts are affecting the world around us. And you can play with this, right? This is like the stuff you're supposed to try this at home. (laughs) Try it at home, you know. Uh, Just try thinking in a certain particular way and believing and knowing and see how the world around you transforms. That's how powerful we are. So, So there's the thing itself and the way it works. It works for us by working through us. And then week three, uh, we had uh, Susan, and she explained what it does. So the thing itself, uh, what it does is it loves. It creates of itself. This presence loves. It is here to experience love. And then if we're experiencing anything less than love, we experience a dissonance and uh, because we are pure love. And so if we find something upsetting, the dissonance is within us that um, we know we are love, but we're upset. And so that creates even more like emotional response, you know, because we know the truth of who we are, but we've got to tune back into KGOD because this thing loves, it loves. And so regardless of what's happening out in the world, remembering and knowing that there's a presence and power within me that loves, that means it loves that situation or it loves that person or it loves everything that's happening even in the midst of it, if you don't like it. So we're tuning back into it, right? Now, God's love is spontaneous, and the law that governs this love is impersonal. And so that's what I shared earlier. It works the same for everyone. And it's always working, whether you're conscious of it or not. So, um, so we come here and we learn that we are uh, feeding our unconscious with our conscious mind. So you listening to right ma- me right now, this is conscious, right? And then there's stuff happening within your unconscious. So it's meeting that stuff, and either the unconscious stuff is open and accepting and saying, yeah, right on, yeah. Or it's saying, yeah, but that might be true for her, but not me. Or I don't know if it can work for me, or whatever, you know. But that's okay. If it's the second part, keep coming back, right? Keep listening, whether you're listening to... Uh, These talks are showing up here or listening to, you know, uh, Wayne Dyer or um, Timber Hawkeye or, you know, um, Adi Ashante or whoever. Who else is there? Uh, Uh, Joe Dispenza. Barbara Waterhouse. Waterhouse. Yeah, right on. Uh, What? Brene Brown. Brene Brown, right? Everyone's saying the same thing. They're just saying it in a different way. And so... Whatever you're listening to, that's going to continue to feed the unconscious until your life is moving and you're like living and being from that unconscious place. 
So this is what happens in life, you know. We grow up and we, uh, we come into form and we're these little babies and we're so cute and we're so close to consciousness. We're like pure, aren't we? And, uh, and then uh, pretty soon, you know, then there's, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. Let's <laughs> just say that. You know, you've got your mom and then you've got your dad and the baby's present for everything that's happening in the house everything that's happening in the relationship, everything that's happening from there on, you know? And then they go to school and the, and, uh, the child is absorbing everything, absorbing, 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 and all of that stuff is going into the unconscious. And then we grow up, we become adults, and now it's like, oh, what is this stuff? Why is my life like this? <laughs> And then we get to new thought or we get into spirituality, you know, what, and by whatever means we got here. Um, and then we start to transform it. And it's a process, right? And so we keep going with it and keep going. And sure enough, the fruits of the Spirit are revealed to us. And it is so beautiful. Um, in the 12-step program, they call it um, the promises, right? The promises. And it's the same, it's the same. So what it does, it loves. It creates out of itself. And then week four was how to use it. And we looked at the bottom of page 52. Hence it follows. It works according to your belief that it works. When it doesn't work, it still works. Only it works according to your belief that it does not. And when it does not, it's still, you know, that one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do you want me to read that one again? No. No, you guys got it. And then, um, so how to use it started at, the, at page five, uh, 51 in the Science of Mind textbook. And so the manner by which we are to use it is by using our thought definitely and for specific purposes. The more definitely we use the law, the more we use the law with certainty without doubting that it does and will work, the more directly it will respond to us. It must. So this is about mastery. Uh, it's about bringing our thoughts into alignment with reality on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. It's a practice, right? It's a practice. And so uh, the, the introduction to the Science of Mind textbook is so important. Those first four chapters lead us into chapter one, and chapter one begins with, in the beginning, God. That's where it leads us to. And... It's just so powerful, and I love that we're doing this in January because uh, this is completing January today, right, uh, in our spiritual lives. And so we get to launch into 2023. It's like, look out, 2023. We are ready. We have gone back to the basics. We have firmly planted our roots, and we have rebooted. We have remembered that the thing itself the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. And this is a recipe for our lives. And that's powerful. Now, I was thinking about this as uh, the talk was um, brewing, you know, in the way that it does. And I got to thinking about electricity. And it occurred to me, well, like God, electricity has always existed as a great law of nature. The thing itself, right? If you put that analogy there. Now, humans studied the way electricity worked. They noticed that there were lightning bolts and it caused static and, and how interesting. This is how it works, right? The way it works. And then humans considered and hypothesized, well, what does it do and what could it be used for? what it does, right? And so they learned, and they actually learned how to use it, and humans continue to use it today. And so the way in which we use it is ongoing, ever-expanding, and constantly being renewed as time progresses. Have you noticed? We're talking about electricity. And so think about how we are perfecting and optimizing how to use electricity daily. We're doing the same thing with this principle that is spirit, right? The divine. We're constantly learning and expanding our understanding and awareness of how to use it. So at first, um, you know, first when you get into this kind of teaching, there's a saying that goes, 
palaces, princes, and parking spaces. Or palaces, princesses, and parking spaces, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. And so it's all about manifesting, and you learn that you can manifest this and that, and, and you practice it, and you put it to work, and, and, and you saw the secret. I mean, who, who here has not seen the secret? Yeah, and so it's all about the manifesting, right? And, and you get that down, and then, and then what? Well, then there's internal work that we get to do. So we get to turn this uh, manifestation into manifesting more joy in our lives, an experience of greater love, an experience of a closer relationship with the divine, whatever it is that we want. It doesn't have to be material things, but uh, when we see it in the material, that it, it, we, re we really get, okay, this works. Now how can I use this here and there and in every aspect of my life? How can I use it in my finances? How can I use it in my marriage? How can I use it in my partnership? How can I use it at my job? How can I use it with my friendships? You know, all of that. And we can and we do. So the thing itself has always been and always will be. It is love and law. Love points the way and law makes the way possible. Well, then another analogy came up, kind of like aerodynamics, right? Aerodynamics has always existed. Maybe not that word for it, but the actual way that uh, air moves through objects, right? That's always been. Hasn't changed. It's always existed as a great law of nature. Humans studied aerodynamics to find out the way that it works. Humans considered and hypothesized what it does and what it could be used for. Humans learned how to use it by studying the rules and applying them accordingly to learn how to fly an airplane, blast a rocket into the sky, and so forth. Now think about that. We have been constantly perfecting the way that we, how we use it, haven't we? I mean, they're talking about going to Mars, <laughs> right? That's different than it was in the 60s or the 70s. Like, they didn't even think about that, probably. It was so exciting to be able to get to the moon, and that was a huge, amazing feat. But humans were tapping into it and learning, okay, how to use it? How do I use it? So we are constantly perfecting and optimizing how to use it daily. Now, we are constantly perfecting and optimizing how to use the thing itself in our lives daily. You with me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'd like to say it's easy, but <laughs> it really kind of is. Uh, but I think the biggest challenge is actually using it. Because we're so used to being upset, we're so used to um, chaos, or we're so used to blaming other people for things. And, and you know, in this teaching, there is no devil. We don't believe in the devil, so sorry. <laughs> it kind of puts the responsibility into us, right? So the things that get in the way are really not believing and doubt. So distrust and doubt. And so I've been talking about that for the last few weeks also. Change your belief and change your life. Oh, a little ant. Okay, <laughs> got a little ant. You can stay right there. <laughs> so turn up that belief, you know, turn it up. Uh, what would your life be like if you were able to believe that things could be totally transformed. <laughs> and even if you had doubt before, so what? What if suddenly 
you know. Remember I talked about I lost my ring in the macaroni salad, or I lost my diamond in the macaroni salad, and how she act my friend actually lost her diamond in the macaroni salad. She was always saying that when she was younger. And then, uh, and then she took this car trip with her friend, and the friend was like, I always get tickets. I always get speeding tickets. And she said, I never get speeding tickets. And so they took his car, and, and he was adamant. I always get tickets. And she said, not me, never. I never. Like, he wasn't getting in her, you know? No, I never get tickets. That's you. And so they're driving along. He's asleep in the back. They get pulled over. And, and she says, oh, my gosh, I got so excited. And I was speeding a little bit because we're so close to my home and I haven't seen my parents in so long. And, and la, la, la. And the cop goes, all right, ma'am, I'm going to let you go with a warning, please slow down and drive safe. And then he looks into the car and says, you, on the other hand, I'm writing a ticket for, for not wearing your seatbelt. The one who always gets tickets. This stuff works, you guys. Just try it on. If you think you're someone who always gets tickets, take that out of your vocabulary. Take that sentence out right now. I never get tickets. My health is perfect. I am abundant. My bank account is overflowing. I am receiving unexpected income beyond my wildest imagination. I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. Whatever it is, and if you need assistance with turning that negative thing around, that's what we're here for as practitioners and ministers, to help guide you through that because we've been trained to do so. Trained. So, so ministers have been trained just a little bit more, you know? Like, when I look back at ministerial school, I don't know if this is true for you, Reverend Diane, but uh, there were some things that <laughs> it felt like Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and then they couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again because Humpty Dumpty was new, right? This is a story of transformation. That's the story of becoming a minister. You get your face ripped off. <laughs> And you need a new face. You can't just like put it all back together and, you know. You have to be new, brand new. And you can. Wherever you're at, you can start today. You can start right now, right here. This is all that we have anyway. Everything else is just uh, part of our imagination because we're sitting here now. There's either was a wedding or there's going to be a wedding. This is a celebration, and you are the guest of honor. This is your one beautiful, magnificent, amazing life. This is your one precious life. Thank you for being here on this day, celebrating this life with me, with us. We're so blessed. Thank you, Zoomers, too. We love you. And so um, as I begin to close, I'm going to invite Travis up to, Travis is going to play behind my prayer, and I think I need to move this over a little bit. Yes? How's that? Uh, so, <clears throat> so as we wrap up this month of January, Root and Reboot, remember, the thing itself as love and law has always existed. And humans studied the way it works, which is by working through us. That's the way it works. Humans considered what it might do if applied in our lives, what it does. We learned how to use it by using our thought definitely and for specific purposes. That's how to use it. And so uh, you have that 30-day challenge from last week, so you should be continuing on with that. But this week, I would invite you to consider for yourselves, where in my life am I not seeing spirit, and how can I see spirit in that? Because it's there. It's there, yeah. So maybe there's 
some area of your life that you have an upset or an anger or some energy about, where can you find spirit in that? Because it's there. (laughs) It's there somewhere. So in other words, everything that we experience is an opportunity, right? Everything that we go through grows us and leads us into our greater understanding of spirit so that we can live uh, to a greater degree of our purpose on the planet at this time. So, friends, you are a beneficial presence on this planet. And thank you. So thank you for tuning in to KGOD, all spirit, all the time, commercial free. Keep tuning in to KGOD and you will learn to accentuate the positive and let go of the negative, which leads to a successful, optimistic, happy, and fulfilled life. Today's broadcast was brought to you by the angels and the cosmic merry maids of the universe. We hope you enjoyed hearing your celestial song of love, peace, joy, harmony, wisdom, compassion, and bliss. Let's take a deep breath together. And join me in turning within and listen to the beauty of that sound that is created by fingers getting onto strings of a guitar. And the sound wasn't there before the individual spirit expressing as Travis appeared this is the creative process in action right now because there's a vibration now that's coming out from these strings creating a beautiful sound and the sound goes where does it go this is the sound of love Allow yourself to feel that presence of love that lives within you right now. And in this presence, I know there's only one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. And everything that is happening is happening right now. There is no future. There is no past. There's right now. We have this moment, and it is this ever-expanding, magnificent, beautiful moment. But we've got to let ourselves be still enough and present enough to experience the fullness and the allness of the divine in this moment. And so feel that love, feel the sound that is coming through the room, through the guitar strings, and the way it's sort of landing in your body and lighting up the different cells within you. Each one of our cells is vibrating at a frequency of love in this moment. Anything that came before this moment is released. Anything that may be troubling us or anything that we feel is disturbing in this moment, we are comforted by the love that lives within us. And so I'm grateful for this month of January. I'm grateful for this opportunity that we have had to root and reboot, and we are ready to launch. Look out 2023. We are coming for you, and we are on fire for spirit. I know who I am. We know who we are. We are love personified. We are light in form. And we get to shine this bright light to all we come in contact with. (sighs) 
What a beautiful gift this life is. I am so grateful. And I know for each one of us that as we go out from here and into the rest of our Sunday, into our afternoon, and then out into the week, that this love, this light within us spills out into our relationships. It spills out into wherever we find ourselves, at the gas station, at the grocery store. Um, there's love, and, and we want to share this love because there's so much of it. The more that I share, the more love is created and generated in this world. I am a vessel of good. I am a vessel of love. I am a vessel of the glory of God. Wow. This is victory, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you, Spirit. I'm so grateful for all of the good that is here now, for all of the good that is coming into our lives. We are blessed, and all is well. And I release this prayer now knowing it is so, and so it is. So it is. Yeah. Thank you, honey. <laughs> all right.